everyone. Today we are going to talk about assessing thick clients, doing a security assessment on them or hacking them. Um, my demonstration would be more on doing a security assessment rather than hacking, uh, but in order to be a good security assessor, you need to be a good hacker as well. So since this video I intend to be very specific on uh, hands-on I'm not going to spend any time on showing you PPT or some slides on what is what is a thick client how does it look like I assume that you already know about it and if you don't I would request you to just go ahead and google it you'll get heaps of information on it it's not very uh, difficult architecture anyways uh, so thick clients are pretty useful and they are commonly developed for most of the operating systems that we have and one of the most common platform on which it is developed is .NET. Um, so for demonstration purposes we are going to use uh, one of the thick lines which is developed in .NET and we will see how do we do a security assessment on it. To be on the legal side of it I am going to specifically use DAM vulnerable thick client it is available on Git. You can make use of it. It requires a huge amount of setup to be done, but it's all done for you in this demo. All right, so let's get started. So let us assume that your client has given you a thick client and you've been asked to do a security assessment on that. How do we go about it? So here I've got a Windows machine, and on this I've got the thick client here, which is a DVTA master. Now this has got an EXE. Now what is DVTA1? We'll talk very soon about it. Let's focus on this EXE. Now you've been given this to do a security assessment. What do we do about it? How do we go about it? So if you just go ahead and right click on it and see what kind of information you can get about it, you have some little bit of information here. All right. That's not enough. So let's go ahead and try and dig a little bit more on it. As in what does it do? How does it do? So, okay, it asks us for a username and a password login and if we don't have that information it asks us to register over here okay looks like there is also a config file over here all right so I'm going to open it with uh, might have opened it up already somewhere yep so here's the deal. This gives you a lot of information as in by default when you download this, this value will be different. I've changed this but this definitely lets you know that okay it is connecting to a database in the background. The username is SA, the DB password value is this. Doesn't look like this is a clear text one but yeah we have a password over here. Okay not very much helpful Ah, but we can find out that okay this is in .NET framework okay now having said that that you know that it is in .NET framework you've got plenty of tools that can help you assess this one of them being dnspy so the operating system that I am running at the moment is x86 so I'm going to use this one And let's try to open up this exe and see what can we gather from this. So I go to dvta.exe. If you open this up, it's not very geeky, but you can understand that this is probably where you are looking for some information that you want to gather. And now if you click here, it is very clear that you have add expenses, an admin module, data table to CSV, login, main, program, and register. Okay, 
this sounds interesting this sounds interesting this sounds interesting let's see what we can discover more about it so let's go to login when you go to login you can actually see the code behind it it has been decompiled okay so dnspy is very very useful uh, if you google it you'll get the installation link don't download it from sourceforge please use the git repository that's the legit one yes if you want to welcome malware on your system feel free to use other links of it okay so if you know how to read the code you can very well understand how the login mechanism is working over here okay the login button and more details you can all see over here if you go to the admin module you can read more details wow so now that you're doing the security assessment you can see that there are hard-coded stuff over here. For example, the username, the password for FTP. So I'm assuming that when you are adding the expenses, and it, it will try to do something to that FTP to upload some information, right? And hard-coding the passwords is definitely a no-no. Password complexity also doesn't seem to be very good. There seems to be some admin.csv. Okay, what else can we gather out of this? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is also leaking out the information about the FTP server that is used in the backend, which you can later on use to compromise and gain access and stuff like that once you compromise this 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 application okay add expenses so literally as you do a code review on any application you have a whole decompiled app here thanks to dnspy which you can read understand now what is the problem with these .NET thick clients is that I'm not sure what kind of a verification system it uses in the back end uh, but let's try to modify this a little bit uh, and see does it check or does it allow you to do what you want to do all right however this is demonstration at the moment when you're dealing with your client if you find something and if you feel like tampering with it please acquire permission from your client to do so all right so first thing that I'm going to do is uh, it is trying to connect to some database in the back end where, where it is trying to log in which we saw in our uh, config file so I've first of all changed this to 127.0.0.1 but it is not in the application it is in the config file so that's all right okay next when you see this login screen here uh, module sorry here it is saying please enter all the fields okay so let's fire up the dbta and see what it does for us so I'm not going to enter a username here but let me just enter some random password and see what does it say it says please enter all the fields okay so what can I do with it I can go ahead right click this and choose to edit in C sharp I can change this uh, entire thing and put it to whatever I want and upload it the end users who would see this will get a different message so I've, I've already done that so I'm going to show you the other version of it which is dvta1.exe so I'm not gonna enter username I just enter some random password again and here you go I've changed the message yep yeah. so that's possible now since we have changed the configuration there um, 
we're going to just go ahead and log in just to sh show you how the application works but without actually logging uh, after logging in there will be some more things that we'll try and discover so let me just try to log in here okay now we are logged in as admin and now we want to see backup data to FTP server okay so let's see in the DNSPY we already saw that we could get the FTP server IP address even if we didn't have that there are other ways and means in which you can try and find that out what are those you can use something as simple as Wireshark or you can use something like a process monitor so let's see what process monitor can do for us all right I'm just gonna put a filter over here to say process name is dbta.exe I'm gonna add that and say okay and at the moment you're seeing very less amount of data here because what is enabled is only network activity and profiling events I'm just going to get rid of profiling events as well what we see is just network events there's nothing because it's not yet talking to the network the moment I click an FTP server it starts talking okay and as you can see over here it is trying to talk on 192.168.56.110 so that's an IP address where it's trying to connect I don't know why does it say reconnect it should say connect that's unusual okay anyways it's not gonna work because that's some random IP and I don't have in my virtual machines network any IP that says this what I've done instead is I've built a FTP server locally on this system and we'll try and make it connect to that what do we need to do for that so let me get rid of process monitor now let me get rid of this and let's go back to DVTA um, So I can go to edit, and I can go for search assemblies, and I can say, I'm sorry, what that IP was. It was an admin module, isn't it? I vaguely remember. Yeah, 192.168.56.110. So I'm going to change it to the IP address of this is of this machine where the FTP server is currently running and I think I've already done that in the DVTA one so let me just quickly go ahead and check that so DVTA one.exe we go to DVTA admin Yep, so it's connecting to an internal machine. Before you can gather the IP, let me just close this off. So that's modifiable. So now you will see that we will actually be able to connect to admin plugin. Demo gods, please be happy and let me log in. network related or instance specific error occurred while establishing a connection to SQL server okay so there seems to be some problem edit there is the problem I did not make it connect to my local system so I'm going to change it to 0.0.1 .0 save this well it is good that that happened you're able to now see how we did it admin login awesome 
it's a variable to log in. Now if we go, let me quickly launch the Frostmon again, just to show you that it's working. Process name is dbta.exe. Add. Okay. Only the network activity is enabled. Let's go back here. And I say back update to FTP. And it says success. Okay. Oh, it's just saying success. Okay, so let me quickly launch my FTP server and see if it did something. Don't go by this Pakode and the other names. Yep, so it did upload admin.csv over here, so it's working. Question is why this did not capture it. So let's try that again. We invoke the process monitor first, then we add a filter here for the process name as dvta.exe add ok now we uh, I get it last time the mistake that we did was we invoked dvta1 and kept on asking process mode to check for dvta so obviously it's not going to find it my bad I'm sorry about it that should be dvta one dot exe add okay network activity is on we go back here we start dvta one dot exe and please note that in real world the attacker is not going to name it as dvta one they're just going to name it as the same file login logged in and the process monitor is in action. Now let's see if our FTP server comes up. It said success. Did we get the IP? No. That's strange. Anyways, um, some of the time we're going to dig more de into more detail about it. But the fair idea about uh, this video is that now you know how to work around your application to try and find what can be done with it. What the application does is very clear from all of the modules that you can see within the code. And if you like go to the program, you have a whole lot of details there that you can see. So take your time to go into each of the modules of your application, try and find more and more details, and then you should be able to see what the issues are. Um, commonly, what you can do is uh, you can try and bypass the authentication mechanism altogether. You can gather sensitive information out of the client. 
the thick client. Um, you also should probably study the behavior of the installation of the thick client. It does a lot of things when once you e get the thick client in, register the users on it. Um, sometimes what it does is it tries and make entries within the registry. We didn't see that for our client, but uh, we can probably give it a try. Like it says, do not have an account yet, register here. So let's say I register here with some name as Andy, password is Smith, Smith, Andy at Smith.com. And then I say register, registration successful. And I say login, and I say Andy Smith, login. Now you have here the options to add expenses, view expenses, clear expenses, backup data to Excel. You should explore all of these modules and then the behavior. Uh, and when you go to add expenses, you have all the options wherein, like for a thick client, most of the vulnerabilities apply as they apply to a web application, except for cross-site scripting. So. Yes, you can search it for SQL injection and heaps of other stuff. Um, it, this was an introductory video wherein I just wanted to give you a fair idea about what can happen, what cannot happen, and how you should try and approach to your security assessment of the thick client. Okay. Uh, if you are going to give it a try yourself, please make sure you go ahead and search your Windows registry for any passwords being added once you added the user uh, as I said earlier a thick client does a lot of things so you should give a holistic approach try to cover most of your OS top 10 except for cross-site scripting and see how you can assess it if you're lucky enough to get a .NET client it is awesome yes one word of caution here that uh, some of your thick clients will be proxy aware some of them will not be proxy aware now uh, what do we do when you do not have a what do you do when you have a proxy aware and non proxy aware thick client so if you have a proxy aware thick client it's easy you can fire up your burp and uh, you can see all the inputs and output requests and responses going in and out and gather the information, plan your attacks. The problem comes when it is non-proxy aware. Uh, burp can still help you if it is if the traffic is still HTTP. But if it is non-HTTP, that's when the problem is. For example, in this case, we were using FTP. In that case, what do we do? So. In that case, you need to make use of uh, Wireshark and see what all data you can see because Wireshark is not limited just to HTTP. It just traces every packet that goes in and out of a network interface. Um, another fantastic tool was Eco Mirage. So if you hook up the application to Eco Mirage, you will be able to see the non-HTTP data as well. Unfortunately, EcoMirage has is not online anymore. So if you have a backup copy of it, you can use it. Uh, but very often it would crash for the newer applications. But yes, all said and done, uh, then your analysis is using Wireshark and some more tools which you can search online. But uh, one key thing that can be utilized is doing a DLL injection. For this video, DLL injection is out of scope, so I will not be talking about it at the moment. So hope this uh, information was useful for you and you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.